Hi everyone, Emma here. I'm so excited to show you what I've done with these gorgeous beads that I got um, from the Northern Bead Company. So these are twin beads, Preciosa twin beads. And these, so if you haven't seen it, take a look at the unboxing from the Northern Bead Shop, or the Northern Bead Company, I mean. These are so gorgeous. So I did find, I was a little disappointed. These are, I think, silver lined. Um, but once you get it on the bracelet, you don't see the, the hole. And I actually like that kind of sparkly <laughs> silver. But you know what? It still turned out amazing. And I did, the other one I said would be really cool to do is the, um, the shiny silver. And look at this one so let's we'll take a look at this one and then we'll we'll move on to the pink so look at that isn't that amazing let's get that in focus turned out so beautiful and I tried to figure out a way to um, use the button as an embellishment so I came up with this kind of a um, a bit of a cowboy type theme or a western type theme with a flower and so I think that's what I'm going to do with this one and just leave the rest of it plain and I'll do a um, a loop on this side I will probably do either um, ladder stitch or herringbone to create the loop for this so I might do a different video on just doing that attaching the button and doing the loop for that I do want to mention though with these silver ones that I noticed when I was making it I had gone a few rows past this bead here and I don't know if you can see that but that one is missing the silver finish on the one side the other side of it is coated um, now there is, you can buy some that are half coat, so it could be that it just got mixed in with it. So anyway, I was like, I was only a few rows past. I thought, oh, I'll just leave it. Not a big deal. I'll just make sure when I go to put my clasp on, I put it on the other side. <laughs> Wait, do you see? <laughs> there was a few more <laughs> like that. So, um, that one's coated. This one here is not coated. And... That one's fine. There was another one in here somewhere. And no, you know what? That might be it. So, but I thought rather than have it, now I could put the button here and you wouldn't notice it too much. But I think on the edge, you're not going to notice it. You're not going to notice it if you're looking up close. But I just wanted to let you know to be aware that, you know, like any bead, there's going to be some beads that aren't, you know, fully formed and stuff like that so um yeah just be aware of that so I I just brought this one out so these were the original um herringbone weave bracelets that I made and I made a blue one like this with some blue crystal rivolis for the attachment um that got sent to my sister and this is basically how it looks when it's when the clasp is put on and it's super easy to put this um, like to put this bracelet on with this type of clasp so if you're interested that's definitely and I think I do have a video showing you how to put these guys on too so that's so you can wear this at the front with this nice sparkly or you can just wear it like that so I just showed you that one because I was trying to come up with a design for the pink and as I was like moving through the different um, Rivoli's, I was thinking I might do one on each side and then one in the middle. I have, let me grab one, an extra one here, one in the middle like this and do something like that. But then I was like, you know what? I really love this weave. So I want to leave it open. And then I thought I might as well just do what I did on the other one, do kind of one on one side, one on the other, and then put the class on each side. And um, then it'll be kind of like that one. So this way you can wear it with the front being just the weave or these beautiful crystals. So these are cushion cuts. 
and they are lovely so there there is designs let me adjust the camera here there is designs to do these so that you create the corners but if you're not really um if you don't do a lot of bezeling and you don't know the different techniques, I wanted to make it super easy for you to put it together. So I just went ahead and did it the same as you would do a round. So you can kind of see these look a bit round, but they do fold over the corners so that it gives it a bit of a the square look. But I'll also show you depending on the beads you use. So these beads are different. These ones are Toho's. So they're a little chunkier and tubular. And these are the Rokai check beads. They're tiny and rounded. So you definitely get the more square look to it. So that's your choice how to do that. And this, again, basically there was no changing on the corners except for when we added the 50 nose I skipped two beads on a corner but I also added two 50 nose on that corner so that's super easy you can do it this way as well so if you're interested in the other in this design let me know I can do it to show you so let's put that aside so I have my these are, I'll tell you what they are. These are Toho 110 rounds and they're crystal neon rosaline. And I actually put the number, oh no, that was 50 grams. That's good that I wrote that. Um, I can't remember where I bought these, but I'm going to do a search from my accounts to see where I bought these because you know what? When I got them, they said neon, but they said pink. So I had to get the pink. I'm not like super crazy about neon. This does not look neon to me. But you know what? They are so beautiful to work with. So I thought if they had some different colors of it too, it would be really nice. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your thread. You know, it was so fun working with the pink is I got to use my pink thread for the first time. This is like... um. This is actually Nymo thread that I got on Amazon in like a big tube with a whole bunch of colors. I think it was like $30. Um, normally I get them. I'll show you how I get my Nymo thread. So normally I get them in these type of uh, things. So this is definitely a lot more. Um, I'd have to look it up to tell you, but it was a good deal but definitely lovely to work with the pink. So I had this pink out, the pink beads, and then my pink seed beads. And <laughs> it's very pink. It made me very happy. So go ahead, take, I suggest you take just a little bit short of a wingspan. You're gonna have a lot more thread than you need, but I tell you, it's so frustrating if you get to the end and you decide, Oh, you know what? I want to go a little further and do like a little peek around the side or I want to cover the whole back with beads. You need that extra thread. You can add thread, but it's nice to have it if you can handle it. Definitely. But definitely a half a wingspan will be plenty. So, oh, I, I brought this blue one out. So I bought these together. These were on AliExpress. I paid about four dollars for ten with free shipping. They now have them for $4.15. They're saying it's 40% off, but um, like the prices have been going up. They, I bought these years ago. So um, yeah, so they have a bunch of different colors of these. They're really beautiful. The quality is awesome. Like the quality, these are almost as close to uh, Swarovski or Preciosa. So it's definitely worth it the um the price and of course the pink is just crazy like you can see these stunning blue sparkles in the crystal okay so get your thread you're gonna wax it 
I used beeswax. You can get that on Amazon, a whole bunch of it. You don't need that much. And put your stop bead in. I'm just using one of the twin beads as a stop bead. I actually find it stays in place a little better than a just a round bead. And then you're going to add 26 of your seed beads. If you were using um, the say the uh, these guys here the Rokai seed beads I think let me see if it did any difference um, yeah I don't have it written down that there's any different if you're looking to make it with the um, something that's not the seed beads let me know and I'll I'll make one in you know what? I have one here. So I think it was 26. So this one here with the smaller beads was a lot tighter. So you might want to use the smaller beads. But <laughs> how can you go wrong? So there you go. Sorry, 11 minutes into the video. I haven't even started. So you've got your 26. There's 5, 10, 15, 20. 2, 4, 6. Take your 26 beads. And you're going to go around to the bottom and you're going to go through a few of your beads to create your loop. I usually go, go two or three. I'll go two this time. Like that. Bring your thread all the way through. And I'm going to bring this down. Very sticky. I'm trying to get it to move to the stop bead. Let me go this way. I honestly, I don't use my stop bead a lot when it comes to doing um, peyote but it's probably a good idea to keep everything nice and tight so let's enlarge this and bring you down a bit so that there's nothing in the way and we'll focus this so now we're just going to go around in the peyote stitch so you're going to pick up a bead and these are 11 O's I'm sure I mentioned it but so you're going to skip the first one your threads coming out of this one skip the first one go through the second one and get them like that and just go around like that so your threads coming out of here you're going to skip that bead you're going to go through the next one i like to hold it with my thumb when I'm working it there your next one coming out of this one skip that one go through that one that. pick up another Coming out of this one, skip that one, go through this one. And you can sometimes take your nail and nudge it so that you can get your needle in. Pick up another. Go through. pick up another your threads coming out of here you're gonna skip that one and go through this one like that there pick up another coming out of here skip this one go through this one and just keep doing that all the way around. Now 
These usually take me about 20 minutes to do from the very beginning to the end. But it takes a bit longer when you're pausing to instruct and stuff like that. And when you're starting. But anybody can do this. It's so much fun. Yeah, that's coming along. I'm just going to tuck that bead under so you can see where your single beads are. Pick up the next one. Go through this one. Like that. Okay. And let's get that nice and Straight. Pick up the next one. So we're coming out. We're coming out of this bead here. We're going to skip this bead and we're going to go through this one here, but we're going to step up since our needle's there. So we're going to step up. Actually, no, we're not. I'll tell you why. I um, did a few practice ones last night and I find. So if you have your circle like this, if you take your thread down to the middle and add your 15 O's, this can be your back and it keeps the tension so that it's nice and tight at the back and then you can tighten for the front. Some people will go ahead and do everything, the, the rows for the front, tighten it, pop their bead in backwards. Um, I think if you're an experienced beater doing this bezeling, that's, that's fine because you know where your tension is for the size of the, the bezel or the, the bead um, or the crystal. So, okay. so now we have our peyote all the way around. What we want to do is go down to the middle. So we actually can, this thread here will go down to this one like that. Let me know if things are confusing to you. Um, sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, perfect. I hesitate and change the way I do things during a video. So if it's confusing, please let me know. It's not my intention. I want this to be easy and fun for people to do. So I put probably put too many. 50 nose. So these are the 50 nose I'm using. These are Toho round size 15 and they are inside color rainbow crystal salmon lined. So yeah, I guess you when you look at them like this, they, you could see the rainbow. When you're just doing one single pass, you don't see it that much. And I use that color because that's the only 15 Oh, pink that I have, believe it or not. Many would not believe that. Emma doesn't have enough pink 50 nose. So you're going to pick up your bead and you're just going to follow the direction of the thread. So you're coming out of this thread. You're going to skip that one. You're going to go through this one. So you're basically just going through all the beads that are sticking out. So let's just tuck that in for a sec here and Bring it in like that. Pick up your next one. Coming out of this bead, you're going to go through this one. And if you're, if you've waxed your thread, that happens where it, let me, um, just adjust it for a second here. There. And you can use your tail to hold on to to keep everything in place. So we're coming out of this one. We're going to go into this one. Pick 
make up. 15 oh. Coming out of this one, skip that one, go into this one. And this one here, I'm not pulling super tight because the the way the 11 o beads are sitting is um, tight enough. Like that dimension of a circle is what we need for this crystal. So let's go through here. Sometimes putting your thumb on that when the thread's going through actually helps prevent it from uh, twisting and creating knots. There. So big news. Um, it's just we are in September. And, uh, and I'm saying this for longevity's sake, because this is a skills video, it'll probably be watched years from now. Um, but Canada Post has free shipping Tuesday in October for small business owners. And anybody can sign up for this um, Canada Post account for small business. You don't need to have anything. It doesn't cost anything. And I don't know why more people that ship even a few times a year don't do it because you get a certain percent off of your shipping. Plus, you have access to the shipping program. So you can type in your addresses and uh, create shipping labels and print them off and then attach them to your package. And then when you go to the post office, you know, and they have a big line and there's some person there going, oh, I need this many stamps and I need that many. <laughs> You're like, oh my God, it's gonna take forever. I actually went in one time, there was a lady, um, she had like these bottles of something, these small, maybe jam bottles or something. And she hadn't packaged them at all. And she was expecting to go into the post office and they were going to, you know, sell her a bubble envelope or something like that to put it in. And then she was going to write the address. So that's basically what she was doing. I was like, oh, my God, I took the wrong bead. Let's uh, go back out. That's what I get for talking mean about somebody. <sighs> oh. So I would suggest if you do something like this to go ahead and um, take your thread off your needle and pull it out because inevitably you get your thread tangled and then it's so frustrating. So let's get this guy off. So anyway, you can just go to the, you know, they'll often have a second line, especially here they have like a second line um, during the holidays. And uh, it's just basically you're all ready to go. You just need it to be scanned. And so that's what I do. So if you're getting a shipment from me and I say it's ready to go to the post office, it means it's ready. Like the minute I show up at the post office, they're just going to grab it, scan it, and it's going to go on a truck. So, so now this is our last one, this little spot here. So we are going to go up to the top beads and we're going to do the front so let's go through here I'm, i actually might go through the first 15 0 that i did and that will ensure that everything's tight so i just went through that 11 0 the 15 0 and then i went on an angle so the three 11 0s and I'll show you what it looks like for the back. Okay. So we're going to add it there. That actually looks a bit wide. We may be able to tighten this a bit. Oops. Pull your thread a bit. So yeah, that tightened it. Hold everything stable like that. There, now that's nice and tight. So if we flip it over, you'll see 
there. That's exactly what we want on the back. So you can put your crystal in right now, but it's going to flip and flop and slide around. So let's. Now we're going to. So we basically have the two rows that we added at the beginning, which is basically three rows, but I don't want to confuse you. But we will add, I want to say two more rows, but I, let me see here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So two more rows will give us the space and then we'll add our 50 nose to get everything tucked in nicely. So again, this part's easy because you're just going through the sticking out beads after adding a bead. So like this. So all that talk about the post office is so that I could let you know that in October every year they do free shipping for um, the small business uh, accounts and what that involves is it's a free shipment within Canada for each Tuesday of the month. So there's four Tuesdays in October. And um, so in the past, I've done giveaways for Canadian subscribers. And then I've done like a, a US one on my own where I pay the shipping. So um, I'm going to do that again. But I just want to give you a heads up of Canadian subscribers. Um, that that's coming because in the past, I've only had like 10 people. Um you know, say that they're from Canada. So I'm hoping to get more Canadian subscribers. Not sure how I'm going to do that. Just to make it a little bit, a little bit uh, enticing. And I'll tell you what I'm doing for the giveaway. This is going to be, I was trying to figure out, you know what, it's so much work for me to do a giveaway of like beads that I have, because I don't know what people use. And then I'm terrible for for uh, giving up my beads. So if I am, um, I thought what I would do is let you pick what you want for the giveaway. So we'll do like a, a studio tour and then I'll do a live, like I'll pick the four names and then I'll do a live with that person and they can tell me what they want and pick exactly so let me know if you think that's a good idea so uh, i i pause at this point here because you can see i say put a bead in between all the sticking out beads but it's a bit confusing here so this is we've come to the end so we're going to go from this bead to this bead and then we're going to step up to this bead and that'll be our next row so i have my bead on there I'm going to go through the first one and then I'm going to angle my needle to go through the second one for the step up. So you can see it's already starting to round. Let's take our crystal. This looks like it could No, I think we will do one more row. I'm always um, questioning whether to do that extra row because I don't want to cover my um, crystal, but you want it to be secure. So to do that, you really should bring it a little further in. So now we can add our bead. I'm going to go around this. So I'll do the same. I will do pick four names out of Canadian subscribers and then I will pick one name for uh, a US subscriber and then I will pick another name for anywhere else in the world. So 
probably, um, I think I'll be asking people to tell me where they're from, but also to put Canada, U.S., or other. And then I can, that way the comment picker will pick by a keyword, and those keywords will be Canada, U.S., and other. So this top one I'm leaving in loose. I will tighten that once we put our crystal in there. So I will be doing a video um, like in the next couple of days because to, um, you know, I want enough people to respond to it so I can get the names to draw from. And if you're wondering where your uh, row ends, Remember we had the step up over here, so you can kind of see there's a space here. So we'll go through this one, add a seed, a bead here, go through this one, and there's our step up and we'll add our 50 nose. There's the one. Two and step up. And I'm going to put my crystal in. Wow, that seems really big. It wasn't that big last night. Oh, I'm pulling tight to get this in. It seems to be working. Oh, yeah. I'm relatively new to this too, so sometimes I um I don't trust my process. <laughs> That's awesome. And it'll definitely go in some more once we add the seed beads. So let's pick up a 50 no coming out of this bead we're going to go into this one it does feel big though I wonder sometimes if the crystals are different sizes because I made like three of these last night and they were perfect every time through here with your 15 that this one here I might recommend that you put about four in and then tighten it it's a little harder to tighten the strand through the whole thing if you're not adjusting it as you go oh there's two there and I definitely hold on to everything because you can sometimes go to pull and you'll just pull everything up like pull the crystal out of the bezel not friendship <laughs> that's happened to me oh or your thread gets caught or your needle or something and the whole thing goes flying. No.
I got a um, puzzle from my sister that's an advent calendar and there are 50 piece puzzles in each little door that you open. One's like sugar cookies for Christmas and the other one is donuts. I told her, I said, I do keto, so why is that getting hooked? Oh, there's a little knot in there. I do keto, so I told her, you know I'm going to be licking those puzzle pieces. <laughs> there's no carbs in puzzle pieces. Yeah, this is coming along. This is working out. So I guess I'm just... Dressing out. And the last piece, or the last bead. So now I'm going to go through the first one that we added. And that's so that everything comes in together as one. So let's just tighten that. And then there we go. That's how easy it is. It, it does feel a bit loose on the back. We can go through and tighten that. Let me see how much movement. Yeah, there's a bit of movement, not too bad. So now I just go through, I, you know, that's as tight as I want it. So actually let's go through the back. So you're just gonna go through the next, your thread's coming out of this 15, go through the next 11 -0 and go on an angle. Till you get to the end. So let's go through these beads. There. And then go through here. Out the 15 on that angle. Time to untwist my thread here. There. So now. So now you're just going to follow the thread direction. So the thread's coming out of this 15, so it's going to go in this direction. And you can add 15s in here if you want to tighten it, but if not, just go through the 11-0 um, the and the 15 on an angle like that. There. So 11 0 and 15, and do that all the way around, pulling it as you go. There. So, yeah, this is. Good. Oops. Like that. It's already like tight where it's not moving at all. But we'll just finish the round. Go through the 11 0 and the 15 on an angle. That tight. 11 0, 15. And get that stop bead out of the way. There. You can see it cinching up. Here. 
You know, I was thinking about the free um, shipping Tuesday just the other day. And I couldn't remember because it's it's catchy, free ch shipping Tuesday. But I was like, what month is that in? And my memory is getting bad with age. Apparently, it's common too after having surgeries. And I've had five surgeries in five years. So... Go through the 11. It's like I try to prepare for different holidays so that I have beading designs ready to go. And I do actually start early. I had planned on doing some summer Christmas ornaments and I just have so much. <laughs> designs I want to do that I'm like oh let me just do this one more and then I'll do the other so I'm sure you guys are the same with you know doing gifts for people and stuff so I think that I remember this bead had a bit of a, a funny line through it here so I think that's I might go through one more but oh yeah this is so much better so it definitely makes a difference if you go back and tighten. So let's go through one more here just to close that loop like that. And then we will. This one here, um, I will tie a knot, but I won't cut the thread because I'll use it to attach to the bracelet. So let's go through two of the 11 O's on an angle, like it wants to go through a third. Let's see if I can pop that one down. There we go. Go through two on an angle here. Sorry, I keep moving. And there's a knot here. There. Bring that through. Yeah, this thread is getting very tangly. There. Okay, try and keep it steady so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm coming out of this bead here. I am going to put a knot here. So you just grab the thread bridge for that between those two beads. You go around once and twice. Put your thumb on that. If you don't put your thumb on it, that loop will um, will get bigger and it won't be nice and tight and small. So you can see now there's a nice little tight. Now don't worry that it's like that big because we're going to put it through this bead and it will tighten it and it will hide it. So I'll just put through like that and pull it tight. So now you're ready to go back down to the bottom with this thread so that you can put your, attach it to your bracelet. So I'm just gonna go through, I might just go through an 11-0. I'm gonna leave it at that 11 here because I might just put my beads across this way, skipping the middle one. So I'm going to take my thread off the needle and I'm going to thread in the other side where the stop bead is. So I could have used this stop bead as well to attach. I, I kind of like the longer piece for that. So you can see this is really um, This stays in place. I think I may have gone through the thread though. Let me see if I can untangle that. Yeah, I went through the thread. Hmm. 
Well, all the more reason to get rid of this thread. Let me see if I can flip that over to the other side. There we go. <laughs> you learn as a beater how to undo knots, eh? Oh, I had to tell you guys, when I was a teenager, it was after grade 10, they had this government program where it was called Katimovic, and you could um, work and live in different communities across Canada. So I did that, and one of the communities in Ontario that I... So I'm just checking here. We're coming out of this bead here. So I'm going to go up two and then create a knot like we did in the other. So there's two. So um, once you're in the different communities, they also had another community experience. So you could go live with Mennonites or you could go, you know, wherever. And one of them was a commune that you could... Um, live on so I ended up and it was just for two weeks so I ended up picking the commune in Ontario I think it was in Ripley Ontario if I remember and um, they sold hammocks at like the, all over so like craft shows and festivals and, and they were all handmade hammocks but what would happen is the big, like it was done with the big rope, the big rope would get into knots and you could get assigned to undo the knots. <laughs> Everybody hated it, but I, I really enjoyed it. So I sat there for days on end undoing knots. It was funny. That was crazy. You know what? I would have totally lived on a commune. But here's the funny thing, is you had to give up all your possessions and money like to contribute to the commune or to the community. And I had nothing. I was like 16. I had nothing. And I'm like, I'm not giving up everything I own. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I'm giving up my beads. So there we go. That's how they make that. Um, let me see where we're at. We're at 48 minutes. Let's go ahead and add this to. So I'm trying to decide which beads to use to attach this. So in this here, I just did a, there's eight beads, but that's a smaller bezel. Let's try, let's try eight of the big beads and put that in there if you're wondering I'm using a size 12 needle you don't need a size 12 needle you can use even with the 15s they're pretty pretty big these so let's Let's thread on 10, or no, let's start with eight and see how much, six, seven, eight. So that's four and four. And we are coming out of this bead here. So let's go across, just take your needle and judge. And it's a pro an approximation. I'm gonna go into that one there see what that gives us that's perfect that's all you need so now I'm gonna go through these guys again like that and you can hang on to that and try and pull this Tight. Okay. 
and go through the other side. So the thread is coming out this side of the, the bead. I'm going to go on this side to try and center the strand that we added. And this should also tighten it. Yeah. Just like that. Okay. So we're going to go back through a few more times just to make sure that this part here is nice and secure. Go through a few at a time. And remember if we go through on the right side this time, we'll go on the left on the other side. So through these guys again. That. It looks, I'm going to go on the left side because there's a, a few strands on the other side. So make sure we reinforce it. Let's go through here. And then we're going to go through three beads. Uh, no, we're going to go through five. So we have eight here, and what I'm trying to find is the middle. So we need the middle two beads. So we we'll go through the first four, like that. Then we'll go through the five, and then we'll go through the bracelet around to the two middle ones. There. So let's move these guys. I'm going to put it on this side because I have a thread on the other side so I can attach it. So we are going to do them side to side like we did in this one here. It seems to work out really nice. Gives you a nice focal point of the buttons at the front. So if I want to make it kind of even, I'm going to go there's one row here of the twins. I'm going to go through the second row. And let me see how close to the edge I want it. I think I'm going to go in through this one. There. So I went through there's one row, two rows, the third row, and the seed bead as well. And you'll see it'll... I'm going to take it to the other side. Let's see where we're going to... So I want to come out... Somewhere in here, I think. Let me see if that, th yeah, that thread, that'll be fine. And actually, no, you know what I'm going to do? Let's go back out. This here is just a matter of deciding where you want to go through. Actually, I think I'm going to go through this one. Down like that. Then I can cross over to the second hole here. Like that. go through the seed bead and I'm following the thread path that the herringbone weave did just so that I don't distort my beads or my work that needs to be in there I'm losing my thread. Okay, make my way back up to the button. Let's go up through this twin bead here. Yes, 
you might want to skip going through all the beads the way I'm doing um, because we have to do this multiple times. So there. Now I am going to go through these two beads. And this will make it nice and secure. And then we'll just go through it a few more times. Whoop, too many. There. So when I was talking about the um the commune, it was it was really a lot of fun because I got an opportunity to do things I would never do so they had a working farm so I got a chance to you know feed the animals and stuff like that and they also had a um, house that was just for the kids they used to call it Sprout and uh, you would get assigned like you know, a, a day or two period where you would work in that area. So you were, you took care of the kids, you fed them, you stayed in the house, like slept in that house with them and, um, you know, did arts and crafts with them in school. And so it was really cool to, to do all that. I mean, you definitely had people supervising what you were doing. So it wasn't like some weirdo was going to be doing crap with the kids. So that looks pretty secure. So I will go through one more time. Through the seed bead and through the ow ow. So you can tell I went through a few times. It's getting tight, but that's the stickiness of the um, wax as well. There we go. Okay, so now I'll just tie this off. See where I'm going through here. Let's go through here and find a thread bridge. Yeah, it was um, it was touch and go. I thought for sure I was going to stay there. And live there for the rest of my life. But you know, when you're 16, <laughs> that's the way you think, right? Then when I was 17 for this summer experience, I did the what they call junior agriculturalist. And they take kids from the city and put them on farms for the summer. So I worked on the on a farm, a pig farm for the summer. I loved it. Again, I was like, this is what I want to do. <laughs> so funny, eh? I guess when you're a kid, you get excited about stuff. So I have the thread on the other side. So let's go ahead and make the loop for this. And then I'll do the, the opposite. So I will put a button. Let me enlarge this a bit. So I'll put the button on this side and the loop on that side. So in the icon picture, you should be able to see that. Now let's get rid of this thread and put this one on. Okay, now we have choices here. So for this one, I did just a regular loop. 
and what did we do? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think thirty on that one. But I, I brought this one out to show you. This is the ladder stitch that I did. And I felt it was a little more um, finished looking. Now, of course, this is like super delicious gold. <laughs> Some of these are like, this is gold plated, tiara cast. These are gold plated symbol elements. Those are gold plated um beads, uh, faceted beads, and then the the uh, Swarovski crystals, and this, these are just regular elements. So, I think we need the, um, the ladder stitch. Let's see. Actually, you know what? Let's do herringbone. So I'm coming out of this twin bead here. Oh, sorry. I'm coming out of this twin bead here. I've added two beads. I'm going to go through this. It's going to bring my herringbone a bit on an angle, but we kind of want that anyway. So we'll come back the other way. So it's just, I've never done this. <laughs> So let's try it. So go across to the other hole and go through that 11 0. Pull everything tight. Like that. Pick up two 11 0's. Like that. Go down this one here. Then, you know what, since this is a clasp, I'm going to go through this hole twice and then go up. So go through this one and then the next ones will go through both those beads. And then pick up two 11 O's. Now we can go through these two here. Like that, and just keep going. Now go down two. I've since looked up that uh, commune, and I haven't been able to find it. So I wonder whatever happened to that. When I worked on the farm, they had two young boys that they had adopted, and they were brothers, apparently, which is kind of unusual on some level, because they were adopted when they were babies, but um, they were so funny. I had so much fun. So they were like 10 and maybe 12. So being the summertime, they were off school, but if you work on a farm, you know, or you live on a farm, everybody pitches in, so the kids work too. So they did a lot of the work with me, and they would show me how to do things. But they had a um, an old guy that was doing like room and board there. And they used to watch wrestling with him. And uh, so they would start fighting on the living room floor like they were wrestling. And they would imitate the different characters. And uh, and then they'd say to the old guy, you know, you know it's all fake. And he'd start getting upset. <laughs> it's not fake, it's real. I'm like, guys, leave him alone. <laughs> Yeah, 
that was uh that was a crazy summer so i i remember taking a bus it was around king carden ontario and i remember taking a bus and i was sitting beside a guy who i guess worked in toronto and would take the bus back and forth to work so he didn't have to drive and uh, so he asked me what I was doing now this is super tight like look at how tight this is I don't know about this we'll keep going we'll keep going we may be changing this so um he asked me what was what I was doing or where I was going I told him he's like have you ever met these people before I said nope they just gave me a name said they'd pick me up at the bus station he's like oh my god you have a lot of courage I was like I was thinking to myself I wasn't actually thinking about it that way <laughs> but thanks for that <laughs> so I got along really well with the farmer and of course it was great for him like I had a good sense of humor and uh you know, we, we worked well together because, of course, he had a sense of humor, too. So one day he was out judging crops for the um, fair. And his wife flipped out on me, saying I wasn't working and this and that. And I was really upset. I definitely got the feeling that this person was jealous of me and the time that I was spending with her husband he was an old guy it's not there was definitely nothing going on it was just I mean I was a hard worker and you know I never said no to anything I tried everything I I learned how to use all the farm equipment and you know plowing fields and baling hay and doing everything so anyway, she went on and on and totally lost her shit on me. So I got on the phone to the bus depot and asked them when the next bus was leaving. So I had missed the last bus for that day. So I uh, got the schedule for the following day. And uh, I got off the phone and I told her, I said, yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm going home tomorrow. I quit. And uh, she was like, oh, you can't quit. And then she was like backtracking. And at this point, he hadn't gotten home yet, right? So um, she actually, they, they had like a supervisor for the junior agriculturalist. She called the supervisor to come and straighten things out. And the supervisor was like doing everything they could to mend it and I basically said you know even if she apologized there's no way I said I can't live in somebody's house that's gonna go off on me for no nothing I work hard like there's no reason for it so I'm, I kind of want this to I might have to do a twist this way yeah so this still has to be a fair size let me see what I did on this one so, so yeah, I still need, say, one, two, three, four, five, five or six, and then the whole other side. So if you guys don't mind, we'll keep going. I'll, I'll tell you about the, let me tell you a story about a name, boy named Jed. Poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. Yeah. So... Um, the, the supervisor couldn't convince me to stay and, um, see the way I looked at it is I looked at it as I, it was a learning experience for me. So I was learning stuff. I, I didn't realize, I think probably like I got paid. So I think it was like $10 an hour and they would average how much work you would do and stuff. I think the families were responsible to pay a portion of that. 
And, but they, it basically meant you're getting maybe a $6 an hour worker for, or a $10 an hour worker for $6 or something like that. So they didn't pay a whole lot. It was kind of like a, um, what do you call that? A, um, subsidy. So that's why they were like, okay, now they're screwed. It's, it's only, um, it was probably midsummer, maybe maybe the end of July. So there's still August, a month. So anyway, it was impair. They couldn't assign somebody to that farm because summer's over. There's nobody to assign, right? So anyway, that was that. The farmer came home. And of course, I'm not talking. And I'm like usually bubbly and laughing and and his wife wasn't talking. <laughs> he no sooner came in the house, he's like, what's going on? I suspect this was probably not the first time that she did something like that. She was really mean to me, <laughs> I have to say. Um, yeah, she had some serious issues. So I think the children's mother a biological mother was a young mother and I had a girlfriend like a friend friend that had a baby at 16 and I had a picture of them on my bedside table my best friend and her son and I was not shy about discussing it right it's like to me there was nothing wrong with it but of course for her it was this idea that, oh, I look, I skipped one. Let me see if I can correct that. It was, you know, not being able to have kids and then this young person that gave her her two sons kind of thing. But I, the way I look at that is you should be grateful that, you know, that person had to go through labor for you kind of thing. Anyway, that's a topic for something else, but that was what was happening, I think. And because when she was yelling and she was yelling at me, like she cornered me in the house, in the kitchen and started like yelling really loud at me and freaking out. I was like, how, how can you stay in somebody's house when that's how they're treating you? So, uh, yeah, when he got home, he realized the shit had hit the fan, and he was so sad. He was crying, and the next morning, he drove me to the bus station, and before he did, he took me. He was the president of the, the cheese co-op, or the dairy co-op, so he showed me the cheese factory and how they made the cheese and stuff like that, and when he went to hug me goodbye. He was crying so much that he did not want to let go of me. And it was, it was really sad. So, <laughs> oh, it gets better. <laughs> I get home and my mom's like flipping out on me. What are you going to do for a job? It's the end of summer. You can't get a job, blah, blah, blah. I live in Toronto. You can get a job anywhere back then, right? So I was so annoyed at my mom's response. I'm thinking, way to be supportive. It, leave it to a teenager to, <laughs> to make it all about them, right? So <laughs> anyway, um, I got the newspaper and there was like a couple of things I could do right away. So I called a few and there was a movie theater job and uh, they said, it, this was like on a Saturday. So um, they said, yeah, come on in at like nine o'clock at night because that's when the movie would get in, like start the show so they could interview me after all the patrons were in. So I, uh, my mom didn't believe me. I said, I'm going for a job interview. She's like, you're full of shit. I'm like, no, I'm serious. I'm going for a job interview. And of course I get there. And like back then, like 
minimum wage jobs, it didn't matter what your skill level was as long as you were clean looking and not to, to uh, sketch, you got the job. So basically I got the job, told me I start on Monday. So I start on Monday and I get in there. It's one theater in the whole place. So of course, what that means is I was like selling the popcorn and stuff. So there was already somebody there. They were training me. So they basically showed me what, you know, what jobs needed to be done and stuff like that. And then once the people were in the show, it's very rare that they come out for popcorn when there's only one show, right? So um, she's like, yeah, you can go watch the movie. I get home from that job. I said to my mom, I love that job. I get to watch movies. I get paid to watch movies. Yeah, so this is really tight compared to the other one. It's probably because these beads are tubular, but we'll still get we'll still get it in there. Let's see, yeah. So I'm trying to think of my part time jobs. When I, I think I was 14, I worked at Kmart folding clothes and like putting stuff back in the bin in order and stuff. And believe it or not, like it was great because I didn't have to deal with customers. I didn't have to deal with um, money and counting and stuff like that. But surprisingly, it's stressful. I couldn't believe people would you just get finished sorting and folding everything in a bin and they totally tear up the whole bin you don't get that as much now people are a little more conscious of stuff at least here in in nova scotia but yeah so i remember when i went for the job it was my my brother-in-law was a manager and my sister her husband uh, her, uh, her husband was the manager. So he said, just whatever you do, tell them you're 16. So I get there and I go for the interview. He's like, how old are you? I said, 16. He goes, oh, you're no more than 15. I said, no, I'm 16. I don't know why they didn't ask for my ID. I was 14. <laughs> so I worked every day after school. And because my sister and my brother worked there, they would work till closing nine o'clock at night and then they'd drive me home. And I was so good at school that there was there was no problem with me, you know, working every day. So this is actually coming together. I don't know if that's gonna be let's do one or two, two more. Yeah, that was one of my part-time jobs. Oh, summer job that me and my sister Sylvia had was working for Brewers Retail. So in Ontario, they have a distribution company called Brewers Retail. So they distribute the beer to all the restaurants, bars, um, and you can also buy your beer in the um, in the beer store. I'm going to go through this one here, and then we'll see if this is going to be big enough like that. Let's make it tight so I can see if that's going to work. Oh, yeah. That's perfect. Okay, so we'll just snug that up. I think we'll do like this. I wonder if I should take it behind those seed beads. Yeah, I think I should. See if we can go back out here without 
having to unthread her. So yeah, we worked for Brewers Retail and what we did, yeah, that's not going to work. So the the beer bottles, the empty beer bottles would get picked up by the truck drivers and they would drop off the the full cases of beer. Okay, so I'm going in behind these three seed beads and through that twin bead like that. Perfect. And we're going to go up two like we did on the other one. So our job was to sort the beer bottles according to the um, the beer companies because they reuse them. So yeah, that was. I think that was a minimum wage job, maybe a, f a dollar more than a minimum wage. But it was hot and stinky. <laughs> Can you imagine rotting beer? And sometimes there was food, like people, chicken wings stuck in the beer bottles and stuff like that. But my sister and I got so good at it, we would, s so the requirement was that you could sort um, 700 cases a day or a shift. And we would easily sort 1,000 to 1,200. So we're basically doing double. But I liked it. I just put my, my, uh, Walkman on and listen to my music and did my job. Okay, so I'm going to tie this in a knot. And where shall I go? Let's go through these beads. I really need to do these type of videos in the lives so people can <laughs> communicate. Because <laughs> now this is a really long video. It should have been a 20-minute video. Let me... Find the thread bridge here. Like that. One, two. Let's bring that down. And go through. Like that. Cut this off. There. So I'll do the same for the other side. For, so it will look something like this. <laughs> That's great. This turned out amazing. There we go. Thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And if you have any suggestions about the free shipping Tuesday, let me know. I really appreciate it. Take care, everybody. Bye.